Charles I. Trusted to govern England according to the law. He has in fact tried to rule according to his own. He has wickedly made war on his own subjects, responsible for all the murders, rapings, damage, burnings, and desolation caused by the wars. He called in help from France and the Dutch against his own subjects. He started the war after being defeated. Charles's response. He did not answer the charges. He argued that the court had no right to try him. He wished to know by what power he is brought here, by what lawful authority. He remembered people he is their king, their lawful king. He has a trust committed to him by God, by old and lawful descent. Charles Stuart. A tyrant. A traitor. A murderer. A public enemy. Tyrant, traitor, murderer, public enemy shall put to death by the severing of his head from his body. Although Charles had earned many enemies only, 80, of the 135, men appointed to be judges actually turned up. Of these, 68, voted that he was guilty, but only, 59, were prepared to sign the death warrant. Three days later, Charles was executed. Charles, King. Charles had very strong beliefs about the role of king. A king could not rule the country by himself. He believed in the divine right of kings. He needed parliament to help him, for example. He needed their permission to raise taxes. Parliament included all the most powerful people in country. The House of Lords there were nobles and bishops. The House of Commons there were elected MPs who were mostly rich landowners but included some merchants. Kings were appointed by God. Members of Parliament were prepared to obey their king. They were ruled by the authority of God. But only if he earned their trust by consulting them, listening to their advice and ruling the country well. Charles expected complete obedience from his subjects. He did not think he had to consult anyone, even his parliament, over important decisions. Instead of listening to parliament, Charles preferred to take the advice of a small group of people whom he trusted and liked. Parliament particularly distrusted Charles's favorite, the Duke of Buckingham. Parliament and the king disagreed over three key issues, money, religion, and personal rule. Money. Parliament's main task was to grant taxes to king. It was usual for Parliament to meet at the beginning of a king's reign to vote to grant the king customs duties, taxes on goods coming in and out of the country, for life. Because they did not trust Charles or his advisers, Parliament voted to give him these taxes for just one year. They hoped this would ensure that Charles would call Parliament once a year. Religion In those times religion was a hot topic. England was a Protestant country, and most English people thought that Catholics were their enemies. Some could still remember what happened 60 years before when the King of Spain had sent the Spanish Armada to try to force England to have a Catholic ruler. Even more people could remember only 35 years before when the Catholics allegedly attempted to blow up the King and Parliament in the gunpowder plot. Henrietta Maria she brought her own priests with her to court. Roman Catholic services were held there. Things Charles did. One of the first things that Charles did was to marry a Roman Catholic French princess, Henrietta Maria. Charles also appointed William Laud as Archbishop of Canterbury. Laud was not a Catholic. But to many Puritans, extreme Puritans, it looked as if he was because he wanted to increase the amount of ceremony and decoration in churches. There were many Puritans in Parliament. It looked to them as if Charles might turn England Catholic again. Personal rule. So Charles decided to rule without Parliament. From 1629 to 1640 he did not call Parliament at all. Instead he found other ways to raise money. Many thought that he was exceeding his power in most of the money-raising systems he used. For example he demanded everyone paid ship money, 
a tax usually only paid by coastal towns to pay for warships to defend traders against pirates. Charles was not the first king to do this. There were no laws about how often the king had to call parliament. But 12 years was a very long time to go without a parliament. And many landowners resented not being allowed to meet to express their views on how England was being ruled. Magna Carta, the great charter the barons made King John agree to sign in 1215. One of the things it said was that the king should not demand taxes without first getting the agreement of barons and bishops. Charles's opponents quoted from Magna Carta to justify their opposition to him, saying he had broken his agreement, already 400 years old by that time. Invasion Charles should have known he would have to call Parliament eventually. When Charles and Laud tried to introduce their religious ideas to Scotland, the Scots formed an army and invaded England. Charles had to buy them off paying them Europe 850 a day. He could not afford this so was forced to call Parliament in 1640. Many MPs rode to London furious with Charles and determined to bring him under control. April May 1640 The Short Parliament The MPs tried to start discussions but Charles dismissed Parliament after only 22 days as soon as MPs were critical and got onto the topic of religion. November 1640 The Long Parliament Charles was forced to call Parliament again when his war against the Scots continued to go badly. MPs took their chance to discuss all the grievances they had against Charles. February 1641 The Triennial Act Parliament passed the Triennial Act, which said that Parliament had to meet at least every three years, whether the King called it or not. May 1641 The Army Plot some of the king's supporters in the army hatched a plan to capture the Tower of London and force Parliament to close. Charles went along with the plot but they failed to capture the Tower. May 1641 The Execution of Strafford The Earl of Strafford was Charles's most important minister. Parliament put him on trial and demanded that he should be executed for treason. Under great pressure, with angry crowds outside the windows of Whitehall Palace where he and his family. Charles agreed to the execution of Earl of Strafford. June-August 1641 The removal of King's special power All the powers that Charles had used in his attempt to rule without Parliament from 1629 to 1640. Special taxes Special royal courts Were abolished one by one. November 1641 The Grand Remonstrance Roman Catholics in Ireland rebelled against English Protestant rule. This scared the MPs, an army would have to be raised to crush the rebellion but would Charles then use it against Parliament? John Pym, the most important leader of the opposition, played on their fears to pass the Grand Remonstrance, a list of all the grievances against Charles, including the need for Parliament to control the King's ministers. Pym tried to get those outside Parliament involved in the struggle. He published the Grand Remonstrance as a pamphlet and had it given out on the streets of London. Gangs of Londoners gathered outside Parliaments and MPs who did not support Pym were jeered at and jostled. Grand Remonstrance The Grand Remonstrance was a turning point. This turned many moderate MPs towards the King. They believed it stripped him of many of the powers English monarchs had always had, like calling Parliament and choosing their own ministers. They even wanted to control the education of the King's children. It looked as if Parliament wanted to rule England with the King as a figurehead with no power.